From time to time, we'll hear about new supplements that seem to be gaining traction online. Um, and I usually find out about this uh, a lot of the time from, from patients that are actually asking me, you know, they read about a specific supplement or ingredient or over-the-counter product, and they've heard that it can help with fertility. So these are very exciting moments to me because I love looking into and helping to find out if there is really an evidence-based approach to using any of these products um, to support patients in, in their uh, fertility journey. Because um, a lot of the other ingredients we've seen in the past and we've talked about in our previous research posts, many of them have very high safety profiles um, and have been studied uh, quite a bit to help with, with fertility outcomes and sperm parameters, for example. Um, so one such supplement that seems to be gaining a little bit more traction or movement online now is a supplement, supplement called creatine. Um, and you may already be familiar with, familiar with this supplement because it's often marketed for patients that are doing workouts um, for muscle growth um, and for um, athletic performance. And I'm not going to comment on the efficacy of creatine for those purposes because that's not the scope of this, this research post today. But specifically uh, in the realm of sperm factor fertility, is there any benefit to using something like creatine? So recently in January of 2022, so a very recent uh, research paper published this year, did a review on all of the trials done on creatine and whether it seems to have an impact on fertility or, or not. And the most notable um, thing that comes up when we look at this most recent review is the fact that pretty much all the studies right now are what we call in vitro or animal studies. So we don't actually have a lot of data from actual human trials. So this is a quite a significant limitation. Um, so healthcare providers in general are not comfortable prescribing anything that doesn't have uh, proper trials done on, on uh, with human studies. So this isn't something that is, in my opinion, um, an active recommendation. It's something exciting to monitor um, over the next few years on you know what kind of additional research comes out because the research that's available right now from the animal studies and the in vitro studies actually seems to be promising um, some of these studies. So where they've used creatine as an additional ingredient um, in the actual um, chemical environment when they extract sperm cells seems to help with sperm parameters and sperm function. Um, utilizing creatine or the role of creatine even in uh, female fertility uh, seems to be quite important. And the animal studies seem to show some promising benefits as well. And we do have one a small human trial that looked at approximately 700 patients and they found that patients who used creatine um, and or protein supplements um, seem to have or tended to have higher healthier sperm parameters. So this is an observation not a causation. We're also looking at a combination of both protein supplements and creatine at the same time so not creatine on its own. So we don't know for example um, this is what we call a confounding variable was it the protein supplement? Was it the creatine? We don't know. So still very early to know. But the theory behind creatine and its potential role in supporting sperm factor fertility comes from the fact that the sperm cells have to meet a very high energy demand. And creatine is part of something called the PCR shuttle, which stands for the phosphocreatine, creatinine, uh, sorry, phosphocreatine shuttle. And this PCR shuttle, for short, is an important uh, component of cellular energy production, what we call ATP. And this component is hypothesized um, to help improve the ATP or contribute cellular energy to these sperm cells that need a very high level of energy um, for them to travel through the reproductive tract and to fertilize an egg. So... It makes sense that creatine, especially because in studies we've seen the amount of creatine actually observed naturally in sperm cells is actually equivalent to other um, tissues in the body that have a very high energy uh, demand, such as cardiac cells. So we see creatine is actually concentrated. I think they found upwards of 15 millimoles um, in, in, in sperm cells and up to four or five millimoles uh, in the actual seminal fluid. So that's a fairly high level. So there seems to be some sort of physiological role. Um, what still needs to be established is just taking additional 
exogenous creatine beyond your dietary sources um, confer any additional benefit? And this is what's still unclear. So with any supplement, we always have to talk with your healthcare provider um, and have an actual discussion for you personally before starting any treatment. You know, is it safe for your case? Is there any potential benefit? What are the risks? In general, creatine has a very high safety profile. We have short-term and long-term trials available showing that taking creatine on a daily basis, um, some of these studies have followed patients for up to five years, seems to be very safe in patients that are already healthy without any pre-existing uh, significant health conditions. So this is something that really should be valued on a case-by-case -case basis, although with the limited research currently available, um, most likely, uh, I think majority of healthcare providers are going to say that it's probably best to wait and look at additional um, alternatives that have much better research on what can help sperm health parameters. And as you know, research continues to go, which is, it, it always does in the reproductive health uh, field where we see anywhere from 120 to 250 uh, studies being published a week um, just on reproductive care and reproductive health. Um, you know, even like one to two years time, we may have more additional information on how creatine may or may not have a beneficial impact for patients that are struggling to conceive.